Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be doing an episode 1 to 5 discussion of The Double. I'm going to go into the discussion with basically titles and headers and then we'll get into it. So let's go. The first thing I want to mention is the tragic case of Xu Fang Fei, who was our female lead. Her death raises a lot of questions, especially about the motivations behind it. The driving force seems to be Shen Yurong, her husband, who claims he had no choice um, but to kill her, but to bury her alive. Um, She would have crushed us like ants. Talking about the elder princess Wanning who wanted to marry um, Shen Yurong and basically they felt very inclined to kill his wife so that his family him his little sister and his mother don't die so he sacrificed his wife for that this statement reveals his fear of the consequences if she lived his wife however it's hard to ignore that his decisions were heavily influenced by those around him particularly the manipulative wan ning the eldest princess wan ning's motivations are clear she wants shen yurong as her prince consort she's orchestrated events to ruin shu fang Fei's reputation pushing the narrative that shu cheated which would allow shen yurong to dispose of her without much backlash it's evident that shen yurong lacks a backbone seemingly unable to stand up to wan ning or his own mother who coldly declares either we kill your wife or we all die despite this it's frustrating that shen yurong chose such a final and brutal solution there were other ways to deal with the situation especially if the rumors of infidelity were enough to cast shu aside and another thing that i find shocking about this situation is Shen Yurong is is a scholar right like he's worked really really hard to like pass the imperial examination and such things it's like how did somebody of your status get to be so admired to the point of her planning your wife's demise you know an elder princess like falling in love with like pretty much an ordinary scholar like he might be super smart and like past the imperial examination and whatever and really admired but just like how did you how does somebody of your status like find a way to get somebody like her to like you i know i'm not saying right that's like oh you know you fell in love with him like it's fine whatever but the 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 classism that's quite evident in dramas like these makes me just surprised that this is even a situation that we're being faced with which which i guess makes it interesting and, and unique within the genre alone second thing the aftermath um and jiang ryu's plight so moving on from shu fan fei's tragic end we meet other significant characters who intertwine with the main narrative duke su emerges as a key player investigating the corruption involving shopkeeper jia and the contraband salt trade duke su's methods are ruthless so this is going to be our male lead but his encounter with the female lead hints at a softer side perhaps even an admiration for her resilience jiang ryu's situation is another heart-wrenching subplot as a secretary daughter she holds a, lit- a title but no real power and is subjected to brutal treatment much to the hypocrisy of her maid who wants to demand respect on jiang's behalf jiang's life is marred by tragedy accused of killing her own mother and brother she's been through unimaginable trauma by the way i think it, when i watched this oh, i watched it on vicky i think it was a mistranslation because her mother is her stepmother is alive but her basically her stepmother had a miscarriage because she gave her stepmother chrysanthemums and then her stepmother looked at her with like basically evil eyes and then was walking and tripped and fell and had a miscarriage and then the, the daughter was blamed for it because obviously she's typical evil stepmother so she's been through unimaginable trauma her story echoes themes for the princess Young with swapped identities and family betrayals adding layers to her character so after her, uh, Jiang Ryu dies basically because she's basically in like a um I would describe it as like a, a nun a nun a nun place where she's like sent away to be like a nun. Um and she's beaten up there and treated really badly. And so she's beaten up so badly that she dies after meeting the female lead. Because the female lead is like she appears on the riverside because she ends up crawling out of the grave that her husband buried her in. And Jiang Ryu like helps her out. But because she helped her out and kept going out of the nun's place, she, she got punished. And so she dies and Xu Fang Fei basically swears to like basically like avenge Jiang Ryu and also like avenge herself by taking Jiang Ryu's identity the maid um uh, Tonga um Jiang Ryu's maid is like I don't know if I like this and then um 
do fan phase like no like i will help you guys i promise like we're all in this together and they all agree to have soft identities the the head nun who's the one who's abusing um jiang ryu is also reluctant but then um Chu Fang Fei tells the nun, like, hey, like, I'm literally gonna, like, make your life a living hell if you don't agree to this. So you better agree. And then she eventually, she eventually agrees. So then we'll get into the third section of this show. Plotting and power plays. Madame Lu, a friend of Jiang Ryu's birth mother and her first mother, her original mother plays a crucial role in jiang's plan to regain control of her life the narrative also introduces us to a chief nun involved in scandalous affairs the same nun that's been beating jiang ryu which the female lead cunningly plans to use to her advantage this is where duke su reappears saving her from a dire situation at the temple because basically she has a plan to basically go to the temple and find a way out of the nunnery because she's been basically she, she's been seeing that the stage is having an affair mainly she could tell mainly because she smelled like um a an aphrodisiac on the nun and she was like i know what the aphrodisiac is because i've used it in my own marriage so she she uses that as a way to get out it's just funny that like duke sue appears right at that moment because it probably would have been pretty difficult for her to get out of the nunnery if not for duke sue to be honest so it, this is very lucky um so Duke Su appearing further cements his role as a protector, albeit a complex one. The story's complexity is further deepened with the dynamics in the Jiang family. The old Madame Jiang seems intent on tarnishing the fee no, the the not old Madame Jiang, so the stepmother the stepmother seems intent on tarnishing the female lead's image, giving her expensive clothes in an attempt to paint her as vain or materialistic. This is after um Xu Fang Fei as Jiang Ryu basically because they she's now her has arrived at the house and everything with Duke Su. And the reason why her stepmother wants to give her expensive clothes is because old Madame Jiang is somebody that values um, you know, people not showing off too much and being very like frugal with money um and she wants to make her look bad the family politics particularly with yang's elder sister and her younger half siblings create a tense environment that the female lead must navigate carefully especially with an important coming of age party approaching a potential stage for her comeback then let's go on to the next topic the ineptitude of shen yirong then there's shen yirong who is revealed to be um, our female lead's ex-husband and a man deeply involved in the story's convoluted web of relationships. His presence at the Jiang household um, and the upcoming uh, kind of age party is troubling. The idea that he could, you know, be there and be so respected by the emperor and all these like top nobles kind of thing is ridiculous knowing, knowing what he's done, but they don't know what he's done. We do. And it's like, I ended up feeling like he married her, not just out of like, maybe let's say lust, let's say lust, but also because of who her parents were. Like her father was a top person in, in the imperial court. Her brother was also connected to it in a sense too. And so he wanted that power kind of thing. Like it wasn't, let's, let's, you, there's no way I'm going to say that he ever truly loved his wife to do this. Uh, I'm going to say it's purely lust because she was seen as like, the prettiest girl in the world and like the most the smartest girl in the world and he got lucky marrying her right he got lucky but it's like after doing what he did and going to that extent to like get rid of her like tarnish her reputation and kill her like i can say for sure for sure right that this guy never actually loved her which is really sad because in episode one to five they meet each other like multiple times and like he's like oh she's definitely not my wife like they just look really alike and she says hello to them she's like hi like she says hello to him his mother at the coming of age party and the sister and the mother and sister are like oh my lord it's a ghost it's a ghost and she's just like ah boo <laughs> and they all leave and she's crying because she's so sad like she loved him so much and he betrayed that love he betrayed that trust because he never actually loved her like let's be honest so it's 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 a web it's a web full of lies 
and <laughs> our main characters are well at least the female lead is definitely like in that web of lies duke stu is mainly focusing on his investigation but you can definitely tell he feels intrigued by her and that it's possible that he's liked her for quite a long time because they've seen each other before like he's seen her in the street and people have been telling him about her like he knows who she is actually and he knows she's lying about who she is so he's just he, he he's curious to see how this opera sort of unfolds and I will say something about the visuals in this drama like it looks like it's taking take like it's laughing at itself like it looks like a parody of maybe your average um gen not gen swap but like soul swapping genre like this looks like it visually looks like a parody of like let's say something like in blossom let's say right like it looks like a parody of something like that in the investigative romance drama as well as like the the mystery aspect of the drama like visually the scenes that are like really serious are like zoomed into their faces and it's just like it, it it paints itself as a comedy narratively not so much but visually yes like it's visually the visual and narrative aspects of this drama are like completely different which which makes me feel quite divided about how i feel exactly about this drama but i will keep on watching because I'm, I'm intrigued by how it's being filmed like in my opinion like a comedy visually but then narratively is actually very serious last thoughts in the end this story is a tapestry of betrayal manipulation and the struggle for power shu fan fei's death is just one tragic element in a much larger, larger scheme where each character is trying to survive or advance their position the female is resilience in taking on jiang renews you know life her interaction with duke su and the way she plans to reclaim her status at the upcoming coming of age party are key points to watch and amidst all this the question remains can anyone in this world truly escape the machinations of those in power or are they all in some way doomed to play the roles assigned to them by fate and circumstance so i'm definitely going to keep watching let me know your thoughts about the dub in the comments below if you have any spoilers just like put a spoiler tag i'll probably read it and it's been out for a while and i don't really mind spoilers too much so let me know what you think if you like my channel please subscribe if you like this video please hit the like button below thanks so much for listening bye